Zen games are titles that reward relaxation, exploring, and more laid-back gameplay. They also happen to be some of my favorite games of all time. And while disagreements abound about Zen games and games where the flow feels right, and you enjoy that feeling where everything in the title is just working right, here we're talking about titles that reward meditative quality of relaxation, especially in their exploration elements. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you like seeing the reviews or top lists for things that are a little bit different than what you might normally expect. Let's begin number one with a bullet. Snow Runner or Mud Runner. Filthy 4x4 feed up gaming. Rolling trucks through mud bogs and across snowy peaks and at the top speed of like first gear. Admittedly, these titles sometimes have a timer or bigger overall objectives, but they can be condensed down into their uranium dense cores where reactions are critical only when you go from point A to B via points R, T, G, and N. The tacit experience is exploration in vehicles across huge maps. And while resources like gas and damage do exist, the game's speed and rewarding of players who engage in those speed limits is like rods into that reactor. It builds energy continually, but it never explodes into something larger, driving around various vehicles, delivering logs, getting logs, finding logs, and becoming stuck between logs is the normal day-to-day -day of this title, exploring the territory and piecing out all the smartest ways to go between two areas is where the magic happens in snow runner and mud runner they are fantastic titles and their sense of exploration and finding that little secret between point a and b is unmatched number two firewatch this is by Campo Santo, and it has you playing as a fire lookout in a national forest in a first-person game, exploring mysteries in a magical, nostalgia palleted experience. Now, that sounds a little bit like the starting of a 1980s action movie, but instead, this plays out as Henry investigates the mysterious activities in the forest while talking through walkie-talkie to his supervisor, Delilah. Exploring some locations as well as choosing dialogue options for your discussions, Firewatch plays a little bit like a Coen's brother mystery without all the Coen's brothers craziness. It's just weird enough and just odd enough to make you continue to pay attention as you explore and move around this location. It does have its tense moments, but even those are experienced in a somewhat relaxed atmosphere with this park as the backdrop to a character study of Henry, Delilah, and those who've done their jobs prior in a sense of isolation and the occupations that are mysterious to a lot of us And well, till we see a game like Firewatch. Hunter, Call of the Wild. Yeah, you guys already know this. One of my favorite games of all times. So more than four years out now, Hunter Call of the Wild doesn't even require hunting, though it is a hunting game, and it has its huge share of weapons and ammo, survival gears, off-road vehicles, and bare burrito stands in the form of Coleman tents that you can buy, wrap yourself up in, and get eaten during the night. It is, however, also one of the best walking in the forest, let's look at bird simulators ever, which might sound boring, but it's not. You can just go out and you can sightsee. You can explore these massive nature reserves, leveraging Avalanche's stellar history with building these large open locations and an incredible variety of very realistic looking landscapes. You have stealth systems, a skill system for hunting, full day night cycles, tons of animals and location information to listen to when you travel around each reserve. Hunter is one of the best hunting games ever made. If you even decide to do that. If you decide to take up the hunting, of course, as I said, you have that point system and the skills to unlock. Oh, and a hunting dog, as well as a virtual petting zoo of animals to hunt down across a land of different locations. What's interesting with Hunter Call of the Wild is it doesn't penalize you for going off script, and it certainly doesn't for actually engaging in its activities, but both are very zen. Abzu by Giant Squid. You got Austin Wintry's smooth musical tracks filtering through a backdrop of a Bob Ross painting of Bob Ross hadn't been a sniper, but instead took up scuba diving and got some waterproof paints. It's beautiful. It's serene. It's you swimming around locations looking for the next big place to go and enjoying exploring with the marine life and getting them to jet around you like dolphins at the front of a COVID packed cruise ship. You explore massive underwater locations. You unravel a bit of a mystery about what's going on with the world. That's Abzu exploration in the expanses of a marine environment that's one of the best looking artistic titles out there a third person swimmer if you will now journey and flower would also be excellent replacements for abzu and there's a reason why because the art director also worked on those and that brings us to Pool Panic. Speaking of unique art, that doesn't sound relaxing when you even read the name. And when you first see this crazy ass liquid TV looking cue ball, you may think to yourself, what is relaxing about Pool Panic? But this has you exploring a creepy twisted land where every location is a new set of rules with the majority of the goals being around getting the different pool balls into the holes. But it is so much 
more than that. It's this freeing game of exploration and off-kilter moments with most of them having no timers, just you and the time it takes for you to figure out the way in which the game wants you to move forward. One location may have you saving balls from the ultimate death by shooting them into holes to protect them, while the next might have you collecting chickens on a farm and trying to separate them from the evil eight ball chicken that's running around amongst them. While the Switch version was hampered with painful controls, Pool Panic is still a highlight for me for that entire year of just unique titles that came out. It's art style, but also that feeling that you can get as you explore. And if you don't like a puzzle, you can just walk away and go to a different one and come back a little bit later. And speaking of coming back a little bit later, No Man's Sky, a game that people have returned to time and again probably because the first time it wasn't so great. This is a third and first person space exploration game we all know about probably. While combat exists, No Man's Sky's strength is that it's not just in the exploration, but in the sedate way in which it can be handled and how it is rewarded. Sure, you can land on an acid planet and watch your face wash off with the rainwater, but every single planet, every space station in the game has something slightly unique that you can explore. You can build your own bases, some new way to get there, and most of them are not requiring combat to get to. Moving from planet to planet, learning ancient alien languages, all while watching extraterrestrial creatures that look like they're made up of collected farts in a clown shop worth of face parts. All this can be done while negating almost any of the combat in the title. By lunch, you're underwater building a basic base in the cold confines of some Arctic pole on a planet light years away from where you were just that morning looking at those weird ass animals. No Man's Sky has so much content and it is rewarding in so many different ways that its exclusion from this list was impossible. And up next, Animal Crossing. It's difficult to deny that Animal Crossing isn't one of the king daddies of Zen-style games, creating a village or on your island, random collections and planting vegetables and sitting back and just watching them grow. It's probably making most action gamers right now start to itch a little bit. But Animal Crossing has been doing it right for ages. It's laid back to the point of feeling like nothing can actually happen at certain times, but it rewards you for planning, taking your time, thinking things through so that you can get your islands rating up, but it never ever penalizes you for changing your mind. The new ability to change the actual shape of the island adds to that. It lets people slowly mold their own location out of time clay, basically. And the more you enjoy this game, the more you spend time here, the more you're rewarded with things that fit within the desire that you have versus any in-game rewards that say, good job, you built an island that looks like a giant middle finger. Sims would be in this bracket as well. However, I find that the consistent reminding of issues and needs and things that require being done doesn't offer that same feeling of trance-like zone out that you can get with Animal Crossing. And that brings us to Ultimate Fishing Simulator. I know that fishing to a lot of people is already zen, but let me describe this to you. I'm not a big fisherman. I don't really enjoy it. This is one of those games, though, that of course it makes sense if you like fishing. But Ultimate Fishing Simulator strength is its sandbox mode, letting you go around and fish in a ton of locations pretty much right away or after just a bit of a tutorial and enjoy yourself and understand things quite quickly, even if you don't like the main activity that it engages in. It looks good. It gets most things out of the way right away. And while it also has DLC and packages you can buy. It is not based on the free-to-play model, which is a number of other fishing games problems. It doesn't really restrict you in that way. It's laid back, it's feet up, listening to some tunes and trying to figure out how to get that one bass to bite right when you want to. It isn't exactly riveting action-packed stuff. It is, however, a title that if you jump into it, you will find an incredible amount of variety and complexity you probably didn't see right from the start. Biomutant patched up now. Biomutant has enemies and bosses, but aside from the latter, you actually can just run around the questionably motivated enemies that inhabit this game world, constantly finding and fitting out this assortment of post-apocalyptic chic armor to your strange little creature and just hammering it on. Its exploration chops are a cut above. Each land looks unique, and while it can be a bit basic, the cut and curve of the lands and how they fit together and some of the smaller requirements to get to them, like, for instance, needing environmental safety measures to explore the desert keep you consistently wanting to find new places. Patches and improvements have helped this title immensely since its first release. Not every title is going to be about those peak-to-peak -peak moments where you're crawling at the top of a mountain getting right to the precipice. Some of them is their exploration between the two. 
and that is Zen, and that is certainly Biomutant. While that is only eight, just like the last top 10, we're going to have you guys fill in nine and 10 and talk about them on the podcast. I want to know what you guys think. What are your relaxation games? What are your games that are Zen-like? There's a difference between the flow state that you may experience in an action game when the combos are coming hot and heavy and you feel like you're completely motor set with the enemies. Those are amazing moments, but the relaxation and Zen-like moments that you get in a lot of exploration titles, even titles that necessarily aren't the greatest when it comes to the other elements that they offer. So I want to know what you guys think. What are your Zen games? Put them in the comments. Make sure to tweet this out. Subscribe. Follow the patron. Do whatever you can. I would absolutely appreciate it. And I'll pick the top two and we will talk about them on Friday during the podcast. That's it for me. I hope you guys all have an absolutely excellent week.